What's up everybody? Today we're going to start the process of learning how to use Gulp for web design and development and in particular how to use Gulp for WordPress. Now if you're not going to develop any themes or plugins or do any WordPress development but still want to learn how to use Gulp then follow along because what you'll learn here is going to be useful in any type of web design or development project. This is just going to be part of a larger playlist where I teach people how to code a custom WordPress theme. So what is Gulp? Well, Gulp is a task manager that automates and enhances your workflow. It helps to make you a more efficient coder. And whether you're brand new to coding or if you're more advanced, I highly recommend using a task manager like Gulp or Grunt or any one of the other ones out there because time is money. And you're going to find that there's going to be a lot of lower end tasks that end up taking a significant amount of your time. So using a task manager will definitely be helpful. So to get started, make sure you have your local server going. I'm using MAMP for this. Use your text editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code. And I like using this one because it gives you good integration with the command line. As you see, I have that window down here. I have my folder structure over here. And I could also split the view, meaning I could have one file open on this side and another one on this side. So it'll make the process of demonstrating how to use Gulp for web design and development and WordPress development a lot easier. Now in terms of my folder structure, what I'm going to do here, if you notice I'm over here in my C drive, in the MAMP folder, in the HC Docs folder, that's where the MAMP web server stores all of the files and folders that you'll be using for development. And then I have my local WordPress installation that I titled DevWP because I have a developer training theme. And this one's specific to teaching people how to code a WordPress theme. And then I'm inside my WP-Content folder and in my Themes folder. When you're using Gulp or a task manager like Grunt or any of the other ones, you have a couple of decisions you have to make. You can either put the task manager files inside of the actual project you're working on so in this case, it would be this DevWP folder. So I could put my gulpfile.js file here and my package.json file here. And once I set that up, I'll also get another folder for my node modules. That can clutter this up. So what I like to do is I go into the folder right above it. In this case, is my themes folder. This is where you would see all your installed WordPress themes. And I'm going to put the gulpfile.js here and the package.json file here as well. And that way the node modules folder will be placed here. In a previous video and demonstration, what I did is I created another folder called the dev project folder, where I put the gulp file and the package.json file. You can go either way. All you have to make sure to keep note of is your file path, because you're going to want to reference the correct file path. And we're going to be using relative path over here, and I'll show you how it works. So now I'm going to go back to my code editor. Now in order to use gulp, you're going to have to make sure you have a couple of things installed. So this first video is going to be about installing Gulp globally on your system, creating your Gulp file.js and creating your package.json file. All right, so what we're going to do is if you notice, I'm in my themes folder, as I mentioned before, over here in the bottom portion, this is the command line. You see it's bringing me directly here to this folder. I could type out ls dash L and you see what I have here as well. Same reference as over here. So you want to make sure that you first have node installed on your system. So you can check if you have it installed by typing out node dash dash version. It'll let you know that you have node installed or if you don't and the version number. And we'll do the same thing for NPM, which is the node package manager. And we have it installed. If you don't have it installed, then you're going to have to go to this website over here and download the version of node for your operating system. Once you download Node, you'll also get the Node Package Manager. All right, so once you have that done, if you already had Gulp installed in your system and you want to start from scratch, then you could type out npm rm for remove space dash dash global and then Gulp. This will remove Gulp from your global installation. And now we can start from scratch. So I'm going to clear the screen. And what this means is I'm going to bring my location over here in the terminal to the top. So I'm doing that by pressing Control L. I can still go backwards and see the other commands that I had, but it makes it easier for me to demonstrate the next commands. All right, so now I'm going to type out npm, which is Node Package Manager, install global gulp CLI, and there's a dash in there. So just make sure you have the syntax correct. npm space install space 
dash dash global space gulp dash CLI. Hit enter return and it'll process that. And now you have the gulp CLI installed on your computer. Now we have to create a package.json file and there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can either go over here in your text editor and if you have an icon to create a new file you could check that off. Or you can go over here to file, new file. Or in the command line since I have it over here I could type out npm init. So this is node package manager and then initialize. So you're going to get this prompt over here. So I'm going to name this project devwp. Version number is fine. Description. Developer training theme. That's fine. That's fine. If you want to put a Git repository, you can put that in there. If you're going to add some keywords for the Git repository, you can put that there. And I'll just put in pick some web. The license. And now you see you have a package.json file inside the root of your themes folder or your project folder. Double click on that and now we see we have this information here. The name of our project, the version number, the description. And actually let me take this out over here. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to keep this to the bare minimum since this is going to be for a local demonstration. Alright, so we have that done. So now the next thing we're going to do is go back over here to the command line. I'm going to clear the screen by pressing Control L. And now we're going to install Gulp into our dev dependencies. So I'm going to type out npm install space dash dash save dash dev and then gulp. So this is the node package manager install and then get used to this over here to dash dash save dash dev because we're going to be using this a lot. When you're installing more modules or plugins or packages this is what we're going to be using so it creates it within our dev dependencies section of our package.json file. Press enter return and now you see we have a folder over here that came up the node modules folder and we have our dev dependencies section with gulp and the version number. So if you open this up real quick the node modules you're not going to really touch this. You're not going to touch this actually. But it's good to take a look to see what's in there. This folder is going to get huge so that's why I like keeping it outside of my actual project folder. Alright so now we have to create a new file. So I'm going to do that inside the root of our themes folder and I'm going to call it gulpfile.js. So you see we have our theme right here, devwp, the node modules folder, the gulpfile.js, and the package.json. Alright, so we're going to put in some test code over here. We'll type out var gulp space equal sign require parentheses quotation marks gulp. And then we'll put a semicolon right there. Alright, so var is for variable. This is JavaScript by the way. And we're creating the gulp variable and we're going to require gulp. So that's the first thing we're doing there. Give ourselves some space, then type out gulp, period, task, and then parentheses, quotation marks, default, go outside the quotation mark, comma, function, another set of parentheses, then go outside of that first set right there, I mean that second set, Give yourself some space and create some curly braces. And then hit return or enter. So make sure you have the syntax looking like this. So we have gulp.task, opening parentheses, quotation mark, default, quotation mark, comma, then function, then parentheses, then the opening curly brace, closing curly brace, and then the closing parentheses for that first one there. And then outside of here, we'll put a semicolon. And in here we'll put uh, just a basic comment. Alright, so some code will go here. Alright, so this is our first gulp command. So we have our variable gulp, require gulp, and then our first task. You're going to get used to this syntax because pretty much what's going to happen here, just to give you an idea, is we're going to be issuing a bunch of commands. So I'm going to put in a commentary over here, comment block. So we're going to have the gulp task, which is to define tasks. And then we're going to have the source. So we're going to be looking for the source of the stuff that we're going to process. And 
and then we're going to have the destination of where we want to place it. And then we're going to have our gulp watch, which is what we're going to be using to watch certain files and folders. So this is pretty much what we're going to be using at all times. We're going to be using variable and then the actual module like that. So we have a var module require, then the actual module we're requiring, and then closing that off with a semicolon. So this is what we're going to be using pretty much throughout this entire course. And this is how gulp works. So if you go down here, I'm going to clear the screen, type out gulp, and you see it worked. Now I didn't do anything because we don't have any um, other tasks in here for it to do. This was just a demonstration of getting gulp set up on your system. In the next video, we're going to go over gulp SAS. And what SAS is, it's a way to process your CSS files or your SCSS files. So that way you can compile a main style sheet. It's a good way to keep your code modular. It's easier to maintain and manage your code when it's separated within distinct paths. So just to give you an idea, inside DevWP, we have a SAS folder. Then I have it organized based on elements, forms, media, mixins, modules, navigation, etc. So this is a nicely organized folder structure. Gulp SAS, which we'll go over in the next video, will process everything in here and then it'll output it to a style.css file. All right, so that's how you get Gulp installed in your system. What you need to get started with it is you do need a local server. You need a good text editor and the one that I recommend is Visual Studio Code. You need to have Node installed in your system and NPM installed as well. And then follow the rest of the steps within this video and you'll have Gulp installed. All right, so again, this is going to be part of a larger training series on how to develop and design websites, particularly with WordPress. So definitely subscribe to the channel if you're interested in learning how to optimize your coding workflow and become a more efficient coder. Also, if you want to get the starter theme, DevWP, it's available on my website. What you'll get is the starting points for the starter theme itself. And you'll also get a PDF breakdown of everything you're going to need in order to get started, along with some code commands as well. All right, so hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. If you need a website, visit pixamweb.com and I'll make sure to hook you up. And again, this is part of a larger playlist, so definitely, definitely subscribe. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.